What is going on, everybody? My name is Japes, and welcome to another episode of my Path to Power. Today, we are selling on all those cards that we got in the 100k a coin pack. Gonna just list them all for 150, which is generally something that I'd say is an absolute no no if you were really trying to maximize your profit and trade on. Uh, but I got another free pack, I think it was because of the season ticket stuff. Another absolute pack of nothing or a steaming pile of mediocrity, as I like to call it, but uh, we're heading back into the best of the best cup, and if I can manage to win this cup maybe one more time, then I might go out and buy one more pack, and it might be worth it because I could get a team of the year card. The reasoning and the logic that we all put in our heads while, we're, while the team of the season is out or the team of the year is out absolutely crazy we all like to think that we're going to be that special one that gets that card because especially if you're on twitter you see people tweet pictures of these you know team of the season cards or team of the year cards that they're getting in their packs and you're thinking hey you know what i could be the next one to get one of those in the packs when actually the odds of you getting one of those cards is really really slim but still obviously possible managed to score a good little goal here in the beginning with eno uh, up from the center mid spot into the box gets a nice little cross from his ix teammate Christian Erickson, I believe. But uh, this game was one of those weird games of FIFA. I'm going to, well, I'll let this uh, play out, but it was uh, it, Walcott too fast, too uh, too pacey for my left back right there, who's Bedimo Insame, who's actually a tank of a left back, and I really, really enjoy him. But he was struggling, or I was struggling, I guess, against the 4 3 3. He managed to get lots of openings uh, kind of in and clear on goal. But uh, Emenike showing his, abs his strength is ridiculous on this game. I actually don't like him as a striker I've kind of come to the conclusion uh, and that's because he lacks that ball control that is ever so important for the style of play that I want to play and you're gonna say well you know Klaashan Huntelaar didn't really have that ball control either but he felt uh, Klaashan Huntelaar felt more in control probably because he was a little bit slower and he couldn't take those long sprint touches out in front of him he scores a 90th minute header that's going to end up winning him the match there, though. So not really that big of a deal. It was the first match of the tournament, so we get to go right back into it, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a okay. Didn't end up wasting a ton of time. You know, it's the worst when you win one game, two games, three games in a tournament, and then you lose the next one because you can, you don't get a prize for winning, you know, a couple games. So rather be eliminated in the first round of it and then move on. Decide to switch things up, though. Going to pick up Luis Suarez, who I've yet to play with on Ultimate Team. Largely because I wanted to use this man, Asaidi, on the left side. Uh, so we're bringing in another five-star skiller instead of Utaka. And going to go with uh, Jose Enrique as left back as well. So that's a really nice Liverpool connection on the left side. And it makes for an easy, easy hybrid. Because Jose Enrique has got some very nice-looking stats. Haven't used him, so I don't know how he plays. You know, stats don't always tell the full story uh, of how a player is going to work for you in-game. Went out, browsed the market, could not decide which right mid I wanted to use. And then I saw Adam Johnson. I thought, you know what? I don't know the last time that I used him. I used him at the very beginning of Ultimate Team because he was a pretty cheap option. I thought about going in for him, Pablo Hernandez. And then I looked at the stat difference and kind of thought, is there really a stat difference? And Adam Johnson, that means I can go with any English right back. Uh, and that means I'll get... Uh, Kyle Walker to play my right back. He looks to be an absolute monster as well. So we're going to go Kyle Walker right back, Adam Johnson right mid, and of course Suarez up top. Still going to keep that Ajax trio at least for the time being. Now I like, I'm kind of liking the way this hybrid is set up. So I can just switch up parts of it per se. So the next part I'll probably switch. I could switch the center backs and the keeper, but they're a pretty strong combo. I could switch. So the next part will probably end up being the center forward, center mid, center mid combination. I uh, going to have to be at the same club again. So I could go, I could go all over the place. There are loads of different options for how that could fit in. This is just a hybrid shell, essentially, and it's kind of insert team here or insert link here. Um, and if you guys are having, you know, struggling making a hybrid, use this as a model. If you're thinking about the 4-4-1-1 formation, it's just it's very, very easy. You don't have to put much thought into it. And the teams work out nicely. It's a formation you're going to have to get used to. And one of the things that I found is I was trying to counterattack a little too much with this formation uh, recently. I need to slow things down, which was good with the first. If you remember back when we had the span 
Spanish combo in the midfield, and Klaashan Huntelaar up at striker. I wasn't trying to use their pace. I was just happy holding the ball, looking for my chances. And now that I've got a little bit more pace in there, I'm starting to try to counterattack all the time and get in behind defenses. And I need to just stick with my game plan. So less LBA passing, more regular A passing, hold it, build it up, and let the options and chances come to me. 45th minute though, we're tied 1-1. He gives it, or I managed to win a header, get it back, and he is going to do something uh, kind of ridiculous. I don't know why he went for a slide tackle right there. Some people might be saying that's a good tackle. The ref deemed it otherwise. Also going to give Glenn Joe a red card. And that is going to seal his fate, essentially. You can't defend with... Well, you can defend with three people, obviously, but not near as well when you're missing one of your players. Suarez is going to step up here. 1-1,000, 2-1,000. And you can see he even dove the right way, but we still managed to tuck it by his keeper. So 2-1 right now. We're going to manage to sneak one more in. In the 61st minute, it's going to be Adam Johnson. Nice little bit of skill out wide and then gets extremely lucky off of a terrible shot. Falls right back to him. The keeper left wondering. Adam Johnson, the jury's still out. I don't know what I think about him yet, but I will report back in the next episode of my Path to Power. I want to thank you guys for your support. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, a like or thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. Other than that, my name is Japes, and I will catch you all next time.